I'm Kaoru Kitajima, and uh, I work at the Kyoto University, Japan, but I worked in the U.S. at the University of Florida uh, for 13 years, and I did my uh, master's and PhD degree at the University of Illinois. And my first uh, trip to the tropic was 1985, and my very first ATBC meeting, I think, was 1986. So I've been attending ATBC meetings for, oh my, almost 30 years. And uh, I am currently president past, meaning I was the president of the society last year. And um, I think the highlight of my ATBC involvement was the 50th anniversary meeting in Costa Rica, 2013. That meeting was wonderful to have all the people, including founders of ATBC, as well as young scientists and students coming. And so there were about 1,000 people gathering in Costa Rica to commemorate the 50 years of ATBC contributing to the tropical biology and conservation. And uh, that was really a wonderful experience to see people who have dedicated their lifetime work to the wonders of tropical biodiversity, natural history, animal-plant interactions, botany, zoology. And then people who are concerned about the loss of this biodiversity in the massive deforestation and forest degradation because of land use change and over-harvest and global economic. The factors that lead to the degradation and deforestation in the tropics and loss of biodiversity very complicated. So we are becoming more aware how do we protect that diversity we cherish as scholars, biologists. How can we use our knowledge to contribute to science-based conservation? Our society means to be really open-minded and inclusive in terms of gender diversity, racial diversity, internationality, and we want to have bottom-up processes and free exchange of perspectives. So for this year, I'm very pleased to see meeting like land spare versus land sharing kind of debate. We have different perspectives. Even we are based on science, but science also depends on interpretation. What is the best way to use scientific knowledge? And I think our annual meetings really contribute to this kind of free exchange of um, expert opinions, and we want to be able to inform general public as well as politicians. So I love ATBC for that. Main reason why people join ATBC and become member is because you find friends, colleagues, and then this is really good for professional development. I remember how inspired I was as a young graduate student to have a chance to talk with some well-known famous professors, but then also as a as I finished my PhD and uh, tried to establish my career. Um, I remember the Guadalajara meeting in 1994. I gave a symposium talk. I had to practice many times. My voice was uh, really shaky because I was so nervous because someone famous was chairing the session. And um, afterward, I started to hear people saying, oh, what she talked about was very innovative, very interesting. And uh, that was the best thing that uh, I got some responses um, to the research I did and shared my experience. And that was really important for me to develop my career and also gain confidence. And that was also good professional networking. So I hope ATBC meetings continue to be a venue for people to gain this kind of experience and also publish in Biotropic, our society journal. So I think this is a place you can find good friends and colleagues and also good critiques too.